Hi everyone, I've got right here today with me a uh, robot running ROS. Now, uh, this robot has uh, several actuators, such as the motors, and it has a lot of sensors. It has gyroscopes, accelerometers, magnetometers, it has GPS, it has also several communication mechanisms. All these devices can be extracted uh, using ROS through ROS nodes. And furthermore, thanks to the public subscribe mechanism that ROS implements, these different nodes can communicate with each other using something called ROS topics, which are channels of communication. This means that, for example, uh, using a ROS topic called, for example, accelerometer, my motors could subscribe to that accelerometer topic and basically react based on the data being pushed to that topic by the sensor. Now, the power of ROS is not just about this abstracted logic that makes it really simple to code robotic applications, but it's also about the chances of distributing all this software logic for robotics into different systems. For example, this robot over here has several computers, and ROS nodes could be deployed in any of them. Furthermore, nodes, ROS nodes, could be even deployed in my computer over there recording myself right now. So let's see now a practical example uh, using RQT graph of this exact robot. The best way to understand ROS is seeing a practical example. In this particular one, we see a set of ROS nodes displayed in red that are actually publishing and subscribing to different topics. Topics are displayed with boxes. ROS has a very large collection of packages, with many being added and modified all the time. This makes ROS quite a pretty complex system where default packages are installed under slash opt slash ROS and whatever the distribution name uh, that is installed, as we explained in the last tutorial. Now, in order to give the user the ability to abstract himself or herself from this complexity, there is the concept of catkin overlays. With catkin overlays, ROS packages can be developed and installed in a different place than the default one while the build system can still cross multiple package installations to find the dependencies. So let's go ahead and create our Catkin workspace. First thing we need to do is we need to source the ROS configuration. As explained before, uh, it should be uh, under slash opt slash ROS slash in this case, indigo, and we're going to source the setup.bash. So there we go. Now all the environment variables should be set up right. We're going to create now a catkin workspace directory, and now within here, we're going to create a src one. Uh, next thing we're going to do is to initialize the catkin workspace. Uh, now there is a command for that, it's catkin init workspace and this creates a symlink to the um, default installation of ROS. So now we're gonna have the symlink over there and with this we can just uh, catkin make to pretty much set up uh, our Catkin workspace.
So we are done. And now here we have all the necessary files pretty much to start developing our uh, Fresh Roast application.